take a look at the stars, the sky, and man, you see a lot of things. You see a lot of stars, a lot of, well, you see one sun, you see a lot of planets. Man, it's beautiful. But I must say that it's even more beautiful or more exciting in the journey of all the great scientists and mathematicians that really develop an understanding, at least a mathematical aspect of the understanding of all the planets, and in particular, the revolution and the motion. So, in tribute, okay, this section will talk about Kepler's laws, okay, Kepler's three famous laws. It's something very big, and I take the honor of really trying to expound, or at least show you what they are. But first, let's just some preliminaries and some storytelling. Perhaps the only storytelling in God's math, so I hope you enjoy it, okay started out in ancient Greek. Ancient Greek believe, okay, that they are very like holy and celestial people and they always worship the stars. So they just thought of something and this was the model that they first thought of. I'm over here, which is Earth, okay, and there's a circle orbit, okay, of a perfect circle, no less, and a point over here which is called C, which moves around in uniform velocity, and then a planet P over here that moves around in, again, a perfect circle in uniform velocity around point C. So this is what we like to call a geocentric system or ge geocentric point of view, where at the center, the circle C moves around in a perfect circle and P moves around in a perfect circle around a C. Okay, this is called the geocentric model at viewing things. Okay, now obviously, you may know that, that I don't think that's correct, okay? But they believe that anything to be called worthy of a celestial body follows this model over here. Okay, so it wasn't until, you know, they kept on thinking about this, and then in the second, second century, sorry, yeah, second century, a guy came in, and Ptolemy. Ptolemy came in, and with his treatise called Amagis, which I think that's, I pronounced it correctly, really solidified, or at least, you know, show this thing in its definite form. He wrote a treatise about it. However, the model was still like this. We are in the center of, and then C moves around in a uniform, in a circle, perfect circle, P moves around in a perfect circle around C. Okay, now all this, yeah, it was fine. And that was in the second century. And then we fast forward all the way to 1543, about another 1500 years away. And then came this guy called Copernicus, Polish astronomer, if I'm not wrong, okay? And he was, he wasn't too good, he wasn't too good because the churches wanted to prosecute him, press, sorry, prosecute him. You know, everybody wanted to kill him because he was the one that now said that, you know what, okay, the sun is in the center and we all will re revolve around the sun. This was what Ptolemy suggested. Now the church just wanted to get him down, wanted to bring him down because it's like, oh my goodness, man, you suggest this thing over here, what are you talking about? That means we are not in the center of the universe and you know we are no longer in a in a well, we are not viewed as a holy or righteous beings, you know, being a center. Instead, the sun is now viewed as the holy and righteous one. I'm not saying that it's not, but what whatever the case may be, Ptolemy suggested this, okay? And before the churches could prosecute him and chase him down, he managed to publish the paper, which if I'm not wrong, is called the revolution of celestial fields. Okay? Now, all this is said and done, okay, and in 1543, you know, he published a paper. Then came Johannes Kepler in 1601. Okay, 1601 came Johannes Kepler, and he was under the guidance, okay, of another person called Tycho's Brahe, if I'm not wrong, okay. Tycho's Brahe, his mentor, and when he died, what Kepler did, okay, was that he took all the data. Now, at that time, obviously, they did not have the formulas yet, you know, they only had raw data. Data where they observe, you know, see what's the time, the planets moves. So he took the data, and then he show that all the data followed three laws. They were consistent with three simple laws that was really amazing, okay? And the laws goes like that. Okay, let me just draw the graph, okay? The first law, Kepler's first law, was that the sun was at the center and that a planet revolves around the sun, not in a perfect circle, but in an ellipsis. Okay, wow, not bad. Kepler's first law that a planet, okay, evolves around in an ellipsis with the sun being the center, okay? Not bad, so we're going from circle to ellipsis. The second law, quite amazing, was that a line segment joining a planet, okay, so let's just say Earth, a line segment joining Earth to the sun sweeps out equals, equal areas at equal time. So, for example, this is, let's just say T, um, I don't know what's the, the, the range, T, two years. Two years, okay, Earth would sweep out, sorry, it couldn't be two years, what am I doing? 
Okay, T would be, uh, let's just say 20 minutes, okay? 30 minutes. In 20 minutes, okay, a point on Earth, the point Earth is over here, it sweeps out an area, the line segment sweeps out an area, which is equal to another part, okay, in the, in, and it's equal to the area that is swept out in another location in the same time interval, 20 minutes. So if Earth starts over here in 20 minutes, it sweeps out this area. If it starts over here, 20 minutes, it also sweeps out the same area. And likewise, if it's over here, it will still sweep out the same area. More amazing, you can see that because it's an elliptical orbit, so the areas obviously will not look quite the same, but they are the same. That is Kepler's second law. And Kepler's third law says that the square of a period of a revolution, okay, around its orbit is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis, okay, of the elliptical orbit. The semi-major axis. That was his three laws of the day. Repeat again. The sun Earth moves in an elliptical orbit around the sun, okay? Second law is that a line segment from the Earth to the sun sweeps out an equal area in equal time intervals. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, same area. And then the square, okay, of the period of revolution, okay, is proportional to a cube of the semi-major axis. And there you go, Kepler's three laws. Now all this is fine. Now Kepler, I gotta applaud him that he managed to, to you know, find three laws just from the raw data, okay? However, he did not really have a mathematical explanation or he did not have a, a definitive form on how to explain these three laws. And then, my friends, in 1687, came the one and only Isaac, Sir Isaac, Newton, okay, and then he, with his inverse square law of universal gravitation, which as you know, a force that attracts two bodies is equal, or the magnitude is equal to this, G over M, M, R squared, where R is the distance between the two, M, M, and big M and small M is the mass of the, masses of the two bodies. With his universal law of gravitation, okay, he was able to use that and prove Kepler's three laws, okay? He first proved this one over here, the inverse square law, okay? Sorry, the, the square of the period is proportional to a cube of the semi-major axis. And with the third law, he could really prove the other two, which was really smart, okay? And that was all seen in this mega book called Prin Principia Mathematica, I think. Yeah, Principia Mathematica. His mega thing that was really, he, it, it showed theories, it showed principles that was far more profound and far reaching than whatever they thought at the time and it paved the way or it paved a new way for physics and astronomy, okay? Uh, Principal Mathematica and he used this law, the universal gravitational law to prove the third one and then from that proved the, the, the first two of Kepler's laws, okay? And that is what we're going to be looking at for this section, okay? Showing the link between Isaac Newton, universal law of gravitation, and proving Kepler's three laws of the day. Okay, I hope you can get a coke, sit back, and really enjoy, and see. Let's see how he did it. Okay, let's go.